Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Guys, before we get started with Dave Smith, I want to tell you about the Free State Project, a project that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, the Free State Project is something that's happening in New Hampshire. What it was is a mass migration of more than 20,000 people who pledged to move to New Hampshire to promote liberty. The premise is you get enough people in a single low population state, free staters as they're known, they can maximize their impact as activists, entrepreneurs, and community builders. Already, 24,000 people have pledged to move and 4,300 people have moved. So if you are interested in liberty, this is your chance to put your money where your mouth is and meet and network with people your age who have communities set up all throughout the state. Now, if you want to go and learn more about this, go to fsp.org slash join, fsp, freestateproject.org slash join. It was founded in 2001. In two years, 5,000 people joined. Why New Hampshire? It's the live free or die state. They don't have income tax. Uh, it's beautiful. I was there for pork fest. I had a great time. If you go to fsp.org slash join, you can learn more about the Free State Project. Dave Smith is obviously a big fan as well uh, because they're not moderates. They actually believe in freedom. fsp.org slash join. Michael Malice here. Let that be your welcome for the next hour. We have with us one of my favorite people, Comic Dave Smith, co-host of Legion of Skanks, host of Part of the Problem, both here at Gas Digital Network, newfound dad. Yes. Which is very exciting. It is. At what point do you stop feel start feeling comfortable leaving the house as a dad? I don't know, but I haven't hit it yet. Okay. I don't know when that. No, it's it's very uncomfortable. I I like like triple lock the door when I leave. Yeah. I I I feel like I, I get paranoid. Like something terrible's happened all the time. I'll get kind of relieved when Lauren will send me a text, and then I get worried something will happen to me, which is weird. Which like I never gave a shit about before. Like I took an Uber here, and it's like real snowy on yeah, the roads. It's beautiful. And I'm it is beautiful, but I'm fucking coming down the FDR, and I'm like, oh man, if I just got in a car crash and got killed right now, like. Who's gonna take care of, of my skanks. family? Oh. Of, of, yeah, <laughs> yes, my family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how's Big J gonna eat? Do you know how much Big J eats? Okay, there's a lot. An average amount. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but it is. It's like you, you weirdly, you like I care about myself more because now I I feel like I have this role to like provide and protect. It's not just like oh whatever what happens to me happens to me. I uh, so I can't, I obviously am not a dad. And it's very hard, you know. If, if, you, if you've never, but you're had, a parent to internet trolls everywhere. I, I am. Yeah. They, they are. They, they look up they to do you. They suckle at my teeth. <laughs> um, it's hard to empathize with someone when you haven't have anything even close to it, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're trying to explain to someone who's never done a drug or had sex what it's like, it's it's like Plato's cave. Yeah. The closest thing I could come of, I'm not even trying to be insulting, but this is like literally probably like one billionth of what you're feeling is when I used to have aquariums, right? And I'd get like a rare fish and every morning you'd wake up and run to the living room. Is it still alive, right? <laughs> and I remember that feeling and it, it like 24 seven, it's in your head is this precious thing still living in your house. And it's like, that is a billionth. So I like all the time, this is your background music. Yes, it's it's very weird. It It takes... A little while to get used to that. I'm not sure I've gotten used to it yet, but that you're like, oh, this is just life now. Yeah. Like that's just always there. There's this fear that something could happen to your child. That's something. And uh, yeah, particularly it's it's better though than it was the first couple weeks were really bad because like a newborn's just so fragile. And small. That, that it feels like they could just stop breathing on their own. Right. Like nothing could happen. They'd just be like, uh, oh no, what do you do? And um, so I'm a little, it's a little better than that. But so yeah. So you're obviously a comedian. So I have a joke from Bonnie McFarlane in my book, right? I talk mm -hmm. about dark humor. And she was, you were at the roast of Big J. Yes. And she turned to Jim Norton and said, your show is so unlistenable. I'd rather hear my daughter drowning, right? <laughs> and I, I love Bonnie. I love that joke. Do you, I mean, you're nowhere near the point where jokes like that are funny to you though. Well, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't have, like Bonnie's a very different style of comedian than I am, but- I don't 
I don't have any line with jokes. But as a dad, isn't it now a little weird to hear that joke? Mm. Oh, it's not. Okay, good. No, because I know Bonnie. I know Bonnie's daughter. Like, I, she, I, she was coming around comedy clubs and she was like a real little girl. Um, and I just know that, I guess it's like in the same way that when you hand Hans Hermann Hoppe a little helicopter, it's like the joke. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but the joke isn't. That's where people like would get you see these people like on on Twitter, even other libertarians and stuff who were like, uh, "Oh, real funny, throwing innocent people out of helicopters." That's innocent. a really funny what is joke. This? They're Marxists. And, well, right, but it's also like that's not the joke, right? You dummy. The joke is that people are now making a Pinochet meme out of Hoppe's physical removal, right. which is a completely different thing. Right. The joke is that you idiots think that's the joke. Right. And so it's like I never like. That that Bonnie McFarlane joke, the joke to me is just a rip on Norton or whoever that was right. about. It's not like so I, I don't take it as a literal like, oh okay. my God, but you're talking about you're making light of your daughter drowning. Like, no. No part of me is like, I think Bonnie would rather listen to her daughter drown than Jim and Sam. Sure, but what I'm asking is, because I'm trying to get into your head, is th so there's still no part of you that personalizes that. Like, don't even say something like that. I remember we did a um a bit on Legion of Skanks. This is before the, um, I, you know, my daughter was born or may, might have is been Is it weird before. saying my daughter? Yes. That is weird. I had, she had a, um, like an eye infection. Already? She was about three weeks old. Very common. Okay. New oh, course. it is? I okay. didn't know that okay. either. Okay. Yeah. Until, like, oh my God, until my a pediatrician what told us, but it's very common. And, but anyway, so I had to go to CVS Don't to Don't you think that mo most of a pediatrician's job is telling parents, no, no, this is okay. This yes. doesn't mean you're a bad parent. Yes. <laughs> Don't freak out. Oh my God. That's like 90% of it, at least in our experience <laughs> yeah. so far. We're like, is this normal? And like 100% normal. It'd be weird if this wasn't happening. And you're like, oh, okay. All right, good. But I go, so she's about three weeks old and I went to CVS to get this cream for her eye to pick up her prescription. And I was waiting online for the pharmacy and I got up and uh, I just, the words came out of my mouth and I said, I'm here to pick up a prescription for my daughter. And I just started having this moment like in CVS where I'm like, uh, like getting choked up and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, like Shaquanda or whatever behind the desk is like, yeah, we have it. What's, what are you doing? Like here. But I was just having this fucking moment. Why, I mean, she did have some name like that. She had a name why, that come on. Why would a pharmacy hire a black person? Does make any sense? Well, I, don't, I wrote a letter to corporate. I haven't gotten anything <laughs> back yet. But uh, anyway, but the point was, so on, this was, I think it was before Lauren was pregnant, but we were on, on Legion of Skanks and we made some joke about uh, autistic kids. And this woman like wrote in, this uh uh like she was very outraged which who the fuck is listening to legion of skanks at this point and still outraged right. over a joke it's like i thought we would have yeah. weeded you out by now right but she goes how and i just remember this stuck with me but she was like how would you feel if you had a kid who had autism i'd love that and i was like i'd feel exactly the same way as before we made that joke yeah I, like I, is your implication that if i had a kid with autism i'd be like oh and we made the joke about it. like right. that's the problem it's not like the kid's gonna I, get it I, anyway I, yes like they I, don't get jokes yes clearly they, they're not gonna get jokes they get maybe the, math but not jokes let me tell you my autistic kid joke and it's not a joke this happened to me i was giving a talk at some new jersey eagle forum or some shit i don't remember what it was it was a lot of conservatives there and the subject of what I was saying- I would have fit in perfectly. Yeah, was uh, how to persuade people of your, and how to engage people politically mm -hmm. and philosophically. And I said, you can't go up to people and start talking about the Fed. How many people even really know what the Fed does? And a bunch of people raised their hands and I kept talking and it took me 10 minutes to realize, oh, they thought I was literally asking. <laughs> so they were saying, I know what the Fed does. I'm like, oh, you're the ones on the spectrum. You're the so now I know who the libertarians are in the audience and who are the conservatives. It was great. Oh, yeah. If they cured autism, libertarianism would die a couple weeks uh, later. My buddy Evan calls it Aspergo capitalism. <laughs> I love that. I think you've told me that before. I love that term. Yeah. A is A, baby. <laughs> you know what that's a dog whistle for. So one of the questions we got into a little bit on Lewis's show, Real Life's podcast, besides the fact that Lewis writes like Charlie from Always Sunny. That was that was one of the main ones. You're, you're, you've, you've talked on your show about becoming pro-life. Yes. And this is something that I have thought a lot about. It's something that, frankly, I'm comfortable being a coward about because it's not a decision I'm going to have to make, and I don't feel that I have a power to make this change one way or another, right? And this is – it's such an issue that's laden with emotion Yeah. that it, it anytime people hear it and you say the wrong thing, right away they write you off and they think you're the devil, right? And I remember I was talking about Twitter, um, and I've come from Soviet upbringing, and uh, – 
they were talking about, you know, selective uh, abortion for Down syndrome, which is very, very common. And so, and I, I just said the idea that there should be a law for this, this is just very something I can't wrap my head around it. And some guy comes to me on Twitter and goes, my sister has Down syndrome. Are you saying she should have been aborted? And I'm like, no, Kathy Newman. But I, I'm not <laughs> saying that. But I could still understand why he was hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, you're definitely right that there's a lot of emotion surrounding it. And I said when I first started talking about this on, on part of the problem, I actually um, prefaced it by saying – I'm well aware that this is a very emotional feeling that I'm having, like, yeah, which I've, okay. I don't think I've ever done that about any topic before, where I was like, just to preface this, this might just be an emotional reaction that I'm having, because I just having a two-month-old baby and going through this whole you know, process, it's like there's no question, th there's a lot of emotion surrounding of my conversion, but there's also um, a lot of science around it. So one of the things that happens when you have a pregnant wife is that you learn stuff that, you know, I never really took the time to, you know, you're going in for sonograms sure. every week or every other week, depending on the period in the pregnancy, and watching the development of your baby the, the whole time. We have a comment from the chat room, which is very disturbing. What's that? Anakin Skywalker equals Dave Smith. <laughs> Wait, who's Anakin Skywalker? He killed all the kids. Oh, <laughs> With okay. a lightsaber. He becomes Darth Vader. Oh, yes. Spoiler. Yes. I'm sorry. Spoiler. Yes. Now, I, I knew I knew the name okay. from somewhere. I'm not very good on stuff. I think I've seen the original Star Wars. Maybe twice. Seriously? In my life. Yeah. Never uh never really got into the Star Wars. The, I, jo the job of the hut scene might be one of my favorite scenes in all of movies because as a kid and still I was very interested in zoology, and this was the first time there was a movie where the aliens looked like aliens and they yeah. looked diverse. Instead of uh, there's a guy with a blue face and this one has a forehead wrinkle. Right, right. It drove me I I, I could I was so spas uh, like spurging out as a kid about Star Trek <laughs> that I couldn't watch and I still can't. Huh. That may yeah, Star Trek was very human like aliens. Yeah. And it's like, look what's in the deep sea. Like <laughs> yeah. they don't have faces. Like, what are you doing? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm getting I'm not even No, that is a good point though. I'm, okay, anyway, you're saying. Um what so no, but I mean just seeing look, there I, I guess there were several different experiences throughout Lauren's pregnancy that really started changing my mind. And then after having the baby and 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 then it just happened to kind of become a big national story with the the new law in New York and the proposal in Virginia that looks like it got shot down. Um, and I just kind of put it together where I was like, well, you know, the, most of the re most of my beliefs come from a desire to be to to support justice and be consistent. You know what I mean? I think that's that's a big part of how you get to libertarianism in general. Sure. Um, and it just seemed to me that the only consistent position here is to say that y you can't kill humans. Even if a, if a human baby is inside the womb and we call it a fetus instead of a baby. You know, like right after, I, I remember seeing after Lauren delivered, one of the, and, and I think a lot of new parents could probably relate to this, but it, you, I sat there in the hospital, that I didn't sleep the whole night, and I just sat there staring at my my daughter, like literally the whole yeah. night, staring at her. And one of the things that just kept tripping me out, it was amazing, was you were like, wow, like yesterday, this baby yeah, it, was inside my wife. And it's it's like, and we didn't have a small baby right, no, either. Our baby like, was over nine pounds. It's like saying, can you, if someone is behind a wall and you shoot them, you're right. killing them. So yes. like, just because there's like skin, that well, makes and no there's sense to nothing, me. There's no magical process of coming through the birth canal. I mean, there's nothing that really changed this. And, and it's not as if even the due date is all just kind of this estimate. Sure, of course. They never know when the baby's going to come. The baby can come earlier. And, and by the way, at this point, a huge percentage of pregnancies don't even – come naturally they come because they're induced i mean they like my oh, yeah. uh, my mother in law a huge percentage of births yes okay, yes so i'm pregnancy. sorry that, that's I thought, what like, I, meant. I thought the births. gays are getting pregnant now no <laughs> no that's those come naturally um but uh or i guess not all but um they uh like you know the, you'll hear stories from women who gave birth in the 80s or something like that about being 3 weeks late sometimes even 3 and a half weeks late they don't let you do that anymore right. because they've determined it's not good for your health so they'll just you know pump you with some uh, oxytocin and you have the baby then it's like so this this nothing just changed now nothing like if you had an abortion a, a two days ago you're killing a baby it's the exact same thing as if you kill a baby once it's out of the womb which i guess some people uh in the democratic party are okay with now so i just i, I and and it's really surprising and i was really propagandized about this as a kid because i came from a very left-wing environment where they were like only religious people care about the idea of abortion this is not, it's it's a little clump of cells in a petri dish it's nothing and it is 
really pretty remarkable how quickly major development happens. And I mean, I heard my baby's heartbeat six weeks old. And by, you know, very quickly after that, a lot of different things happen. I mean, when we were on Real Ass Podcast, you said, I, I was basically like, well, look, I think it's completely arbitrary when you decide the time frame is okay. And you said, no, it's not arbitrary. I'd say first brainwave. Yeah. And I didn't even have that in my head as a marker, but I was like, okay, that's interesting. Ironic, and we looked it up. I've had a choice of words. Yes, it is. <laughs> but uh, I still haven't had my first brainwave. Um, but we looked it up and what was it? It was five it was, weeks. Yeah. But so which it's, I, it's I, I, extremely early. That still does not sit right with me because at five weeks, it's the size, the, the, the child is the size of what? Like not even a Twix bar, correct? Yes. Smaller, I mean, way it, smaller yeah. than a Twix bar. Probably. Um, I don't know why that's my metric. I guess because I'm on a cut trying to get my daughter spelled back. <laughs> so like my brain's thinking carbs It's got to be sugar. very, very small yeah. at five weeks. But it, that doesn't mean that there's not a lot going on there. And he, even if that was the point that you picked that you said wasn't arbitrary, it's like, well, okay. Then if you're saying it's the first five weeks, you even your position would still be then that the vast majority of abortions. I mean, when they're talking about even in this New York law, okay, the stuff that got all the uh, the, the outrage was the incredibly loose language about having an abortion all the way up to delivery where, you know, if it's the mental health yeah, of the that, woman yeah. is in jeopardy, which is just very, to me, very creepy. Um, but what it says, which no one really seemed outraged about, and I believe you had a tweet recently, something about this, is that you can have an abortion up to 24 weeks for any reason, for any reason that you decide. Sure. Now, the vast majority of these abortions aren't for health risks or defects in the babies. It's just really convenience. It's like people didn't feel like being a parent. Like 24 weeks. You know how developed a baby is at 24 weeks? I mean, in the same sense that the day before a woman delivers, that's a baby. At 24 weeks, man, that is a baby. Like, it's, it looks like a baby. It feels like a baby. It experiences pain. It's uh, like, I mean, that's a very developed uh, person, in my opinion. Um, one of the, this, you, you touched on something, and let's have this discussion. When I love talking with people who come from the same kind of school of thought, because when I'm unsure about something and they're not too, we can kind of stumble our way through sure. it. Sure. You said you're for justice. Have you read Max Stirner? I don't think so. What? Give me a title or two. He only has one book, The Ego oh. and His Own. So Max Stern, you probably what's have, it called? The Ego and His Own. Der no, I've never read and it. Gentum. So for those of those who don't know, you probably haven't heard of him. Uh, he's basically the hipster Nietzsche. He came out okay. in eighteen. I think the book came out in eighteen forty one. Someone has a first printing in his <laughs> house, uh, which was not cheap, and his whole book. There's only one drawing of him. There's no photographs of him. Marx wrote a whole book against him, what an asshole Sterner was. And he was the first anarchist individualist. And basically he talked about spooks. This has become a meme. And he's just like, love is a spook and uh, patriotism is a spook. He didn't, I'm not using these exact examples, but the idea that there are these concepts that don't really have meaning that are used to manipulate people and, and, and kind of are, are things that restrain us. Justice. The more I think about it, the less I think that's a good idea or has an actual meaning. Because I am more interested, I think, with peace than injustice. Here's an example. Let's suppose you and I are buddies, you sell me uh, something, a tennis racket, and it's broken, and from your point of view, well, it was fine when I mailed it. From my point of view, you have a responsibility to give it to me. One of our positions is just, one of ours is unjust. I would much rather split the difference and maintain the friendship and put it behind us and like have some perspective who the fuck cares, then we have to have justice. If justice were an organizing principle, you wouldn't have plea bargaining. And a lot of times I'd rather have the plea bargain than justice and have that person punished. Hmm. Okay, I don't know if I agree with that. I think that there's, just because there's gray areas where it's unclear what justice is, wouldn't mean that, um, that the the concept doesn't exist. So e even because you could, I'm say not saying it doesn't exist. I'm saying it not, might not necessarily be the actual goal. Because you had just said we're looking for justice, and I'm like, I don't know that I am. Yeah, no, I would agree with you that libertarianism is to me the philosophy of peace. I think yeah. that that is more or less what it's about. But I think that justice is related to keeping the peace. I, I agree, but it's so a, okay. so no, I might agree with you there that maybe peace would be more of an ultimate goal than justice. But again, um, and justice to leads me, to peace. Peace to me, peace is just another way of saying non-aggression. Yes, I mean, there's I agree. The, the, synonymous. They're the, yes, they're synonymous. Um, and and for non-aggression, there has to be some type of system yes. where if there is aggression, 
we at least attempt to right the wrong in some sense. So to me, they're all very interrelated, but I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. Like in those examples, sure, I would personally be more concerned with, well, let's move forward, try to find a way that we can both be relatively pleased. But in any scenario of peace or, or non-aggression, which I think what we both recognize that would probably be the, the, the what really separates us from leftists is that uh, private property is essential to that. Uh, that you can't have any so, type of peace without private right, property. Right, the only rights are property rights. Yes. All other rights are, sub, are, 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 are functions of property so rights. So even in that sense, what we're really saying is synonymous is peace with non-aggression with property rights, right? Like these things are all kind of very interrelated. And when it comes to property rights, you can certainly find lots of gray areas like that too. I mean, you know, like whether, you know, where exactly does trespassing start? Sure, where exactly sure. does violating someone's property rights? And I think that all rights are um, have to be applied with some amount of um, like they nothing's absolute. Everything has to be applied with some degree of reason. So hey, how about that for a moderate statement? <laughs> um, but uh, so you know, like Hashtag if you Robin. you know if if you um, if somebody you know um, accidentally you know they're in the woods and they accidentally cross onto your trail, which is private property, and you didn't want people there, and you like sue them for trespassing or something, and, they, and somebody could be like, well, it was an accident. He left as soon as you asked him to. There were no damages, so there's no real verdict here. But the examples I'm thinking of are World War One versus World War Two, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, you can make the case, okay, the Kaiser started, both wars we didn't belong in. Some chapter two of the New Right. Um, I can't wait to read that. Oh, dude, the, can I tell you a secret that, that everyone? It's hear? not really going to be a secret if you tell me right now. Um, if you know what, now that the people, the haters are my jocks, so I can't make this public yet. But okay. something funny happened. Ooh, that's what I, people I'll, hate. Hate people hate when you do it, that. On I'll podcast. tell you guys in my supporting listeners group. Ooh, okay, look and at I'll that. tell you. So. Uh, and uh, th th there's a reason for this because the cost might be very high, the benefits very low. I'm saying something now, um, World War One, we got to make Germany pay. They started this shit, mm -hmm. right? Justice, you started it. You got to pay. World War Two, we're gonna rebuild your countries for you, even though clearly you were the aggressors. Now it's not really. Now you could say, okay, the people didn't do the thing; it was the government. But at the very least, the idea that the U.S. has to rebuild Japan and Germany, it's hard to say that that's kind of justice. Well, I, I would agree with you on that. Although, I guess the one, I will say that at least maybe you could say there was some element of having learned the lesson from World War One. although I don't actually believe that's true. I think, truthfully speaking, we should have learned, not learning the war for World War One is a huge part of everything that's wrong with uh, uh, the world yes, order Woodrow today. Yes, Wilson is by far he the most evil He ruined the world. Yeah, evil and, president. And just think, if we had truly internalized the, the lessons of World War One, which would be, you know, you have an American president who says, we're gonna make, we're gonna go to war to make the world safe for democracy. And certainly, there was not a lot of democracy going on at the time, right? Like you had, it was basically a war between monarchs in, right. in Europe. And he said, we're gonna, we're gonna make the world safe for democracy. And you have this huge war, tens of millions of people die. And at the end of this war, that, where you were gonna make the words, world safe for democracy, you now have uh, Lenin, then Stalin, in Russia, yeah. and you have Hitler yeah. in Germany. And to just, it, it's really not rocket science to just go like, oh yeah, maybe we didn't love the monarchs, but there could be something worse. Yeah, oh, yeah. And right. you know, it, and Mussolini. I mean, yes, I mean, if we had, right, if we had just thought like that very basic lesson, uh, apply it to overthrowing Saddam Hussein or Muammar Gaddafi or a, any of these, where even these maniacs who still want to overthrow Assad, and then you go like, do you not realize that even if this is a relative bad, there is, it can get drastically worse than this. Well, 79 in Iran was a great example where they're like, yeah. the Shah, who was pals with Andy Warhol. Warhol right. would, this is how westernized Iran was. So Andy Warhol would go there. He would write his diaries how he knew if the Shah was doing well or not based on how big the plates of caviar were at the dinner. I mean, Warhol mm -hmm. is like the most American. He literally painted money. They told him, Andy, paint what you love. So he painted dollar bills. Jesus. This is this is like Rand, you know, like on on uh, it would be on uppers. Well, she was on uppers anyway. Um, and they're like, the Shah sucks. He's a dictator. And that's the other thing. There's when you think about justice, it's like this person is bad. True. They must be punished. True. Maybe. But it's like, yeah. But what's going to happen? when you inflict your yes. punishment. And it's like, yeah, it could be worse. And the other thing with, with the, the Iranian situation, which I think is somewhat of a law of, of human psychology, 
is that no matter what the situation is, you know, like you'll see those people who are argue about, say, India, and they'll go, well, look at like X, Y, and Z factors that got better under under imperialism, right? So the production of textiles sure. or something like this, literacy rates went up, you know, economic conditions improved. Like, well, look, before, you know, the British like took over, it wasn't as good and this got better and they brought them this first world knowledge. And you're like, okay, yeah, but why did so many people still rally around kicking the British out? Because they don't want to be dominated by a foreign country. They, they don't want the other dominating <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, they want to be dominated by their own country. <laughs> well, but, but that is true. But look, I'm, I mean, it's yeah, true. It's, it's true. like people eat, and even if they have their own problems, they want it themselves. And even if people can look at the Shah and say, well, this was better under the Shah, it was still very much seen as America coming in, yeah. overthrowing the elected leader and propping in our guy. And this is to the same point where like what Fox News, Republicans get completely wrong when they'll be like, uh, oh, you know, all these uh, um, Black Lives Matter, whoever, they're pissed off about the cops. Wait, hold oh, on, hold on. I've had many leftists on this show. This is the first time someone has actually invoked Fox News Republicans. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Thank good. You. They're good. They deserve to get slapped around too. But when they'll say, oh, you know, you talk about the, the police, uh, you know, mass incarceration or police shooting black people or something like that. Forget the individual cases that might they might get wrong. But they'll be like, well, how about black on black crime? Why don't you talk about that more? And it's like, because this is a foreign occupying army, right. at least in their eyes and, and in reality, I would say as yeah. well. Yeah. It's like, so they're going to look at that and be like, well, no, that's problem number one. It, it's just part of human nature that you're like, okay, well, we'll so solve our problems or maybe not, but we don't want to be ruled by this group who's from the outside coming in. It is always funny to me when people are on Twitter or something and they're like, why don't you talk about X, Y, and Z? And it's like, for the same reason, I'm not currently making a souffle. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> it's either not my skill, not my forte, or not my interest. And it's it's very weird. Have, let me get your perspective on that. You've been doing this longer than me. Um, are there expectations? I, I mean, you're much more of a political person than me with your show. Like, I, I'm much more generalist. I have you know people from all over the, the spectrum. Um, do your fans? Do you have a name for your fans? Oh, what a fuck! I think I have. We, I think we've parts had of the problem. What the are they? Name, the, they were the Smarmy Army at one point, <laughs> and um, then I can't. I think Lewis came up with that name. Um, <laughs> That's but amazing. then, and then, what was there? Was something else? But I can't remember. Oh, the problem children. Oh, that's perfect. One, yeah, yeah, that one I came up with. That's perfect. Yes, that's right. But so, I don't use it too heavily. Why? I'm you not, should. I, maybe I should use it more. The branding is good. Yeah, All and right. it makes people feel... I'm, so what expectations do they have for you that you're just like, what do you do? Like, I, you don't get... Like, not indiv I'm sure there's individuals who think they know you. Yeah. And like, why aren't you doing this? I'm like, I, I, I don't want to. Oh, I, my favorite is... And it's, it's pretty rare... But and this is a very first world is, problem, by the way. Yes. Like, oh my absolutely. God, my fans are telling me the wrong thing. <laughs> and boo no, but I'll get I'll get comments from people who are like, um, you know, uh, oh, you, you know, you didn't talk about this. They're afraid to bring this up oh, or yeah. something like that. You know, it's like, oh, how come you haven't talked about the um what I got which I actually did talk about on my last podcast, but the um the what's it called? The uh BDS. The the, the it's Israel? like oh Dave talks about everything except when they go after Israel, and you're just like been heavily critical of Israel yeah. before like what I, I don't even but it's also just like it's like well why did you talk about the Covington story so much and not talk about the BDS it's like I don't know because I saw that story and had a lot to say on it yeah. like what it's there's literally no more answer than that but I remember getting which I've gotten a few times and I think these are at times from people who are a little bit unstable but I've been you know accused of being a, a shill where they're like oh Dave you know especially in like 2016 when the the kind of Trump moment happened and, and I, I was not on board with the like build a wall mass deportation thing. And they're like, Dave's a shill to, you know, associate libertarianism with open borders and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing when you're on the other end of that. And you're like, man, if I'm a shill, I should definitely be making more money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's the one I that I've, I've mentioned this at a live stream, which is I get where they're coming from because I understand their psychology. It's so weird. It's like, why don't you talk more about Israel? And it's like, I don't know that much about Israel. I can tell you right now, all nine parties in order in the Swedish parliament by order right. of representation. I 
can't I can name Likud. I don't know if they're left or right. I know Netanyahu, <laughs> and that's it. I'm I'm from born Europe. I'm interested in European well, politics. It's, you know what's funny? And too? it's because like, I'm Jewish. Therefore, I should have strong opinions about Israel. And even if I have strong opinions, doesn't mean I'm informed. And my shtick is: if you are not informed, shut the. F- Fuck up. Well, that's that's a good rule of thumb. But a lot of times what happens, too, is that people look to you because you influence them on things and they learn things from oh, you. And then they I look to you like, that. you know this stuff. So you sit in and talk about fucking North Korea. And it's like the way people's minds just work where you're like, well, Michael knows stuff. Michael's like, he I knows. So that Because I've gotten this before, too, where people, people just be like. People think he knows stuff? Yeah, that's that's how dumb the population <laughs> these, is today. These problem children. <laughs> yes, that's that's who I'm dealing with. No, but people will be like, um, can you please comment on you know whatever? Uh, can you please comment on the Brazilian elections? And it's like, is the assumption just that I know what's going Wait, on? Wait, I, I like this. Like, oh, sure, I can. Uh, yeah, it's like well, but, well, the reason I don't write, I would literally just be, I would be looking it up right now and then telling you what I just read in an article. So like, just Google it yourself, and you've got me tied yeah. on this. So, th- but there is this assumption that you I just know about that. that stuff. I'm so autodidactic, self-taught that I don't really look. I, I don't really trust people, and not in the sense that I don't trust them, that I distrust them, but like I don't get it that way. Maybe there's a very few people, but there's certainly no one in the public sphere. Because I guess I would just call you up or Tom or Kennedy or somebody that like, oh, I'm, I I don't ever think of myself as having that role for them. And I guess I do. So is, they're like, yeah, By the way, you're right, that's you're one right. of the main things. Holy like shit. Your, your attitude Mind where you go blown. like, well, I'm going to talk about these things that I know a lot about. And I'm not really going to talk about things that I don't know. Like maybe if one interests you, you'll research sure, it a bunch exactly. and then talk about it. But that is a really it, – it's a big dynamic. Like in, in the mainstream media – there is so much of that. I mean, I was like blown away by, you know, so um, like I used to do SE Cup show. I was a contributor yeah. on that. And her like main issue is Syria. And I would start talking about, because I actually know a bit about that. And I would start talking about what's going on. And she's like, hasn't even heard of this. Like it's, it's unbelievable how many topics they'll dive into with a strong opinion on some CNN show. And you're like, well, CNN just said this. And you're like, they don't even know. I mean, they don't even know. Like, she was talking about the roots of the the uh, civil war in Syria. And then she's like, basically like, well, and there's off camera talking. She's basically like, oh, Bashar al-Assad started killing all his own people. And I was like, well, you know, I mean, it was after the redirect. We started, yeah. we were opposed, uh, you know, we, we were like in, in stark opposition to, to, to Assad. And she's like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, okay, well, around 2006, 2007, the Bush administration decided that, oops, we've overthrown these Sunnis in, in Iraq, and now the Shiites have all this power, and Saudi Arabia was furious, and Israel wasn't happy either because they hate Iran. And so we were like, well, we got to redirect now and take power away from the, the Shiite. And like, this was like new information to her. And I'm like, this is like your issue that you talk about. So it's amazing how many people just pretend to have these kind of strong opinions and don't even bother who are like, Making millions of dollars on yeah. huge platforms. It's really something. I always like giving people the benefit of the doubt. So, and even when the mass drops a little, I assume, I, I remember, wow, I, 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 you know, I, you've got me rattled. Like, I can't even wrap my head around that because I'm so big and I'm sure I fail a lot of time. I'm sure. I'm so big on if I'm going to be holding forth with a strong point of view. Mm-hmm. I really better know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right. And even then I'll hedge my bets, right? North Korea, okay, no one's going to touch me on that. But a lot of these other issues, I'll be like, I'll try. This was a tweet that it was very kind of disturbing the reaction. When the stuff with Virginia, we talked about this in Real Life Podcast. When the stuff with Virginia happened, when, when the governor Northam was talking mm-hmm. about the, the kid, basically we're going to resuscitate the baby and then decide whether to kill it. <laughs> I said, but they wouldn't. And he, I love what he specifies. But this would only happen with the mother's permission. Yeah. You're like, oh well, thank you. Yeah, the, yeah. Did that even need to be mentioned? And it looked, it was so disturbing on its face. Mm-hmm. I tweeted out, "Can someone who's pro-choice tell me what th- I'm missing here? Because right. I really want to hear that this isn't what it sounds like, and I'm completely wrong." And all these pro-life people flip their shit because they have their speeches preloaded. It's like, oh, you don't want to be actually be informed. I'm like, no, no, no. Your point of view, I got on this one. It's not hard. I want to hear. In fact, it's a lot easier to understand that point of yeah, view. Yeah, and this in this context certainly. So I go, tell me the other side because I really want to make sure I have bo- both sides covered. And people don't think in those terms. It's it, so it was very kind of revelatory, and I was blocking like crazy. Like the other thing that drives me crazy is when you ask a specific question. It's like, oh, you should have asked 
no, no, no. You don't tell me what I should do. Right. Okay. I don't know you. Yeah, and usually they're saying I know you. You, and you don't asked. tell me what I should do. Right. I ask you, and you tell me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's like this thing where the, they'll always be like, "You should have asked X," and usually X is like the first question that would have been asked that you've already asked and answered a million times before, and you're like, "Yeah, well, obviously that." But now I'm like moving on to this question right. here, and that uh, I mean, I I was. And, and this probably just says something about just the kind of political culture that we're in today. But it was the type of thing where you're like, man, I, I would think from just real people who I've talked to, I know a lot of pro-choice people and everyone I knew who was pro-choice was like outraged about that. They were like, whoa, 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 this is insane. Like having a, an abortion when the woman's dilating, ha killing a baby after it's been delivered. Like that most people were just like, this is, this is bananas yeah but it, it there's so many people that in public they're still just like well we're on team pro-choice we're on team women's rights or whatever which somehow women's rights have been completely defined by abortion and i also find and I, I mentioned this on on my show well, because you build on your past victories right, right. so that was a, a supreme court victory it's very hard to undo because it's supreme court so you want to start with where there's a and there is a somewhat of a consensus that like if it's the first trimester uh, you know, th this no one's really putting up the fight if there's not a consensus. It's right. it's a victory. It's yeah, as much a political correct. victory as you can have. Exactly. Yeah. So you build on your victories. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think you're right about that, and that's kind of the nature of progressivism in general is yes. to keep you know building on whatever you have, no matter what direction that takes you in. Do I need to tell you again how much I love Heshi socks? H e s h i socks dot com promo code welcome thirty for thirty percent off. I love my Heshi socks. I wear my Heshi socks. Valentine's Day is coming up. They want you to flip the script and treat yourself. It's the biggest breakup day of the year. When you're a kid, you don't want to get socks. When you're a grown up, it's an affordable, fun gift. And they've got all kinds of socks. They got the fancy ones, they got the plain ones. You wear them with sneakers, you wear them at work. They're like pillows for your feet. They've got the arch support. They're made with high end Pima cotton, which is highly breathable, and it's antimicrobial. Cushion to the footbed, the heel, the toe. These are durable. You know how regular socks wear out? Not these. And I am speaking from experience. If you go to heshisocks.com, H-E-S-H-I socks.com, and use promo code WELCOME30, you'll be telling me you're welcome. Take a look. I know what I'm talking about. You know how I am with clothes and socks. I, one thing that I find very interesting that I think a lot of, you know, like a, as a libertarian, as a, an anarchist or anarcho-capitalist, is you know, you're variety of anarchism um i like it all though what i consider myself an anarchist before i consider myself a capitalist no i understand yeah. but you're you know you're an anarchist who believes in private property oh, and so, so it's yes. you know whatever you want to sure. call it that's what i'm saying i you know the term capitalist has been pretty poisoned and uh, a lot of times if you get into an argument with anti-capitalists it's just basically them defending like the Wall Street system as capitalism. Yeah, so it's whatever. Which yeah, we which, right. which we're so, against as much as anybody. Yes. And so you just get into it's like, well, what are we really talking about here? But right. private property, voluntarism, whatever you want to call it. Um, one of the things that's really interesting to me, this isn't like a proof or or even an argument, it's just something that's interesting, is that the Democrats who are pro choice and leftists who are pro choice use strictly libertarian principles to argue yeah. for the, the for the right to an abortion. Like down to, a, the, I'm not saying the libertarian position is being pro-choice. I'm just saying their argument is a, a woman owns her body. It's my body, my choice. Um, I don't want the government being involved in my medical decision. Uh, if you make it illegal, there will be a black market where all these bad things will happen. I mean, like down to a T, it's our argument on just about everything. But it's just interesting to me that this is the one time right, right. there's one area where you choose to invoke these liberty principles and it happens to be with what I see as killing babies. So it's like very strange to me that in the... Uh, I'm, li I'm actually listening to a Democrat say, we don't want the government involved in your medical decisions. Right. Really? Right, right. But yeah. only for this one. It's very strange. It's like they're libertarians when it comes to immigration and abortion. And every other issue, they're, they're complete statists. I, I just find that peculiar. I completely had a great question for you, and I completely lost my train of thought because this is what Alzheimer's is happening to me. Wow, this is pretty early for it to set in. I lost Are that. you just like a really great-looking 78-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a great-looking anything. <laughs>
No, for 78, dude, you're killing it. <laughs> you haven't seen my scrotum. You should. You would be on one of those like commercials where like you're like, I juice every day or something. It's Michael Mouse abs. Uh, do a, uh, um, so here's, I, I remember what the question was. Because you were saying you were coming to this from an emotional point of view. For sure. It, it, Ayn Rand was on Donahue and he was asking her about Christianity. And he said, talking about original sin. And she's like, do you? She's like, I've never met anyone who could really believe it. That like when you look at an infant, which is the symbol of innocence, that you're looking, well, that's sin right there. It, it, like she's like, it, it makes no sense. She didn't explain all this, but it was just you know clearly her reasoning. If you are looking at this as killing a baby, if you knew a female had an abortion, do you honestly look at her as a murderer? No, but I don't think that those two things are like mutually exclusive. So hold it. It's, it's, I look at it kind of like this, right? I I look at war as mass murder, right? But if I meet a soldier and I know several of them, I don't personally treat them the same way I would if there was somebody who had just in cold blood murdered someone on the streets the other day. You would treat a cop differently than a regular person. What What do you mean? Like if you knew someone was a cop and is still currently a cop. You're going to look at them a certain way. Oh, no, that's true. And there's probably something to that with the, with the military as well. I just look like even in the Nuremberg trials, right? Like they basically had this idea that, OK, so I was just following orders is not a valid defense for did high you, ranking officials. By the way, officials. did you see the, the NYPD, I think, during the after after 9-11 at some point, they were protesting and they were literally holding up signs that said just following orders. I my favorite moment I've ever had in cable news was I was on with Christine Quinn. Oh, and we I, oh got God. Into Everyone, this battle. And it got into, it went oh viral. My God. And that look, that fucking shit eating grin on your face, which I know well, because I wear oh, that grin. I and love you're just that. like, all right, we're going to do this. It was, it was such a great moment where I go, like, oh, I don't even have to. I got her. I said, like, um, I was like, so you're going to say these policies are horrible, but you d you can't blame the cops for them. So you're saying they're just following orders. It's not really a great moral defense. And she goes, it's an excellent moral defense. And I was literally like, I was like, oh, so she doesn't, she doesn't even get the trap that yeah. I just laid. Like she's oblivious to this. She's just a term. Cause like, maybe that is a Jew thing where that means something to sure. us. Like you hear that and you know exactly that I'm quoting the Nuremberg defense that right. the Nazis used. And, um, and she just goes, into, and after that, I just, that was when the shit eating grin came. Like, I was just like, oh, I'm not even going to point out that you just yeah, said yeah. the Nuremberg defense was a perfectly moral, morally acceptable. However, the point I was making with the military is that I don't think like in a, in a libertarian society tomorrow, I don't think we would start prosecuting every soldier for, for murder in, in Iraq or something like that. Okay. I think that much like with the Nuremberg deal, you would go, okay, high level people there do have, are responsible. There's gotta be some cutoff where you're like, this was just something that swept up the entire well, culture. Well, this is again why justice is a bad idea. Well, maybe, yeah. maybe you're right. Maybe you're right about that. Or at least that justice is not the ultimate black goal. and white yeah, yeah. and so easy to enforce. Um, but I would say where, as I do think technically speaking, it is murder. I think that there was a vast culture of accepting this. And what I would want to do would be to kind of criticize that culture and, and get to a point where it's just not accepted. Okay. Um, but so, so no, I don't think I, I don't like look at some chick or, or some guy who's, you know, chick had an abortion and be like, like with the same attitude that I would look at someone who just killed their one year old or something like that, because we just have a cultural acceptance of that being murder. I'm just saying logically looking at this and emotionally looking at it, I, I don't see how it's really much different. What, what about if a female friend of yours was going to have an abortion? Would you try to talk her out of it? It probably depends on how close a friend uh, she was, but I, I think I might. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, if she asked you. I think it's different the circumstances if she asked you. Yeah, probably, yeah. No, that's fair. You know, that's the, fair. The circumstances probably would play a lot into that. You know? But I think it's also the kind of issue where it's so hard to implement. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. You know, I, I completely agree. We were having all these situations where like, okay, what if exceptions for rape? And then I said, and you agreed. You're like, yeah, then any woman's going to say she's been raped. And B, it's really crazy to have a woman have to tell her doctor she's been yeah, raped. And, no, it's just like, I, yeah, and you're like, yeah, you're right. That, that's, that's No, I completely agree. And that that is, a, a, it's just one more um, example where really the state is going to muck anything up. And that this is why you want to have a voluntary, a voluntary society where you would have other ways of dealing with these things and not just something like um, 
you know, like my my guess would be in, in a anarcho capitalist society, you would probably have lots of areas where they wouldn't, you know, allow abortion clinics, sure. and you'd have other areas where they would, and probably that would just be the best way to deal with it. There's, you know, or, in, and we're also forgetting technology. Like, well, yes, and be, that might if solve. If there was some way where, like, okay, it happens in the first week. I think everyone would be much happier than if it's like, all right, you only find out when you're four months along and then it's... Yeah. Well, and also the other um, aspect to technology is just if you could create like a um, womb-like conditions outside of the womb where you could still save the baby and it'd be put up for adoption without... You know what I mean? So there's there's lots of different... Th- I'm, I'm sure it will be a question that will be answered by technology as most questions are. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite thing still about doing skanks? I mean, just like, just hard belly laughs. I like. I've always loved that. I've I've always. I I mean, I, I don't think there's any anything particularly unique about that. But I love just hanging out with my friends and laughing really, really hard. And Lewis and Jay are just two of the funniest people They're on the planet. Really funny. And you just, it's like every show or just about every show. There's at least going to be a few points where you're just like grabbing your side. Because something just so goddamn funny was said, and I've always loved um, like really dirty, yeah. inappropriate humor, and particularly in 2019 in America, it's like I'm I'm sticking my flag in that. Like that's the, no, I'm sorry, it's fine. Wait. And in fact, it's how people cope with tragedy. Yeah. What's funny is you are the same off stage and on stage, right, Lewis? puts on his Lewis character and it's very transparent. It's almost like a wrestler and he's kind of, he's, he's, he's not even pretending but otherwise. Lewis is almost mocking someone oh, right. who does a character. Correct, correct. Yeah, no, like, it's very, it's not, he's not pretending. It's yes. like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican last yes. mode. It is so funny to watch him act like that. Yes. And he, has that side of him always been there or is it something that developed it's, over it's time? It's developed for okay. sure. I mean, that was always like with, with most kind of characters, there's something about him oh, yeah, that a, he's playing on. It's a heightened on. version yes, of himself, right. right. Yeah. Or a heightened version of a part of Correct, himself, yeah. but no, he's it's definitely developed. And with the more success Lewis has gotten, the more he's leaned in to the Puerto Rican rattlesnake. It is like, so it, funny it's great. to watch. It is so fun to watch, especially because he has that he he has, does it with a straight face. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, he's fucking great with that. But there's also he does it with a straight face, but there's still like a wink yeah, and yeah, a yeah. nod, oh, yeah, like you just know what he's doing. But <laughs> yeah. it's it's fucking great. Uh, here's the question: You and him go way back. From day yes. one, your roommates. Yes, before I did stand up. What is Lewis like? Have you ever had a big argument with him? Oh yeah, me and Lewis had some blowout okay. fights. Oh dude, I mean, okay. Just What's like, he like in an argument for real? Oh, he's a maniac. He's a complete maniac. He screams his head off. Oh, we've had scream fights. We've never like fist fought or something. But I think me and Lewis have been a, a couple times, like a few inches away from this actually wow. just starting to go go blows with each other. Have you um, ever been to fist fight? Yeah, I've been in several. Okay, in my life. but not. I. I mean, I haven't been in a fist fight since college. Okay. Um, and my last one didn't go good. Okay. I got punched in the nose. It was bad. Ooh. Bro- Bruce open. I felt like I was doing pretty good in the fight too, and then I caught a punch right in the nose. I think I broke my nose. I mean, I. I don't know. It wasn't like bad enough that yeah, I yeah. had to go to the hospital or something, but it's still. I have like a fucking lump in it, oh. and it was like. Oh man, that's really bad. That's a really, really bad place to be in. Yeah. Or is in fact because it just start it started leaking. Like when noses bleed like that, I oh, mean yeah, it's yeah. like you can't imagine like how much blood you're like, I should I should be dead for how much blood I've lost. Like my shirt was just covered in blood. And it's amazing how debilitating it is. Cause you're like in one moment, you're like one moment you're just in a fight. I never saw the punch coming. It just landed right on my nose. And then all of a sudden you're like, first off, it hurts. Like a, n- your nose really hurts. So you're in a lot of pain. Then it's it's bleeding like a faucet, and it's going back in the back of your throat. So you're also choking, yeah, yeah. and your eyes completely water up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I'm in pain. I can't see, and I can't breathe, and I've got my fists up, and another man is throwing fists at me. And I remember just being like, you're almost like a like your adrenaline's up, but you're almost just kind of aware. You're like, this sucks. Like, man, I don't want to be here right now. And uh, it went bad. Wait, so what were you like in these arguments? You're screaming back. At at the beginning, I was. I don't, really, you know, I don't, I don't know. I was an idiot. I was oh, I heard 19. there's a, I'm being told in the um, uh, chat room that they, these were actual podcast episodes, that there was a classic po- Skanks episode was you versus Lewis. Oh yeah. Me and Lewis got in a About big what? fight on one of the, it was like one of the first, po- it's like they, all the things were so stupid. Like what? It was, it was like Lewis. I, I think the story was Lewis was like running late and then he came to meet me and Jay 
and I like went to the store and he started flipping out and was like, where the fuck are you, dude? Like, you got to get here. And I was like, dude, you were fucking the one who was running late. Yeah, yeah. And then it just, you know, we were like fucking, uh, you know, we were young and um, broke and drinking and just being idiots. Looking back at it now, it's just like, you know, it's embarrassing, but it made for great uh content yeah and also at the time it was like i think there were like 30 people listening to legion of skanks okay so it was almost like just having a fight with your friend and then like now you know is that we get like hundreds of thousands of downloads and it's like oh everyone's going back and listening to all the early ones so now it's like oh shit well i guess that fight's out there forever but yeah we had a few fights lewis and jay had a few fights on the podcast like just oh yeah Have you ever had it out with jay not like that me and Jay have definitely had things where we had to like go talk, but okay. it was never like me and Jay's dynamic would always be like a little bit more passive aggressive Ooh. if we were like in an argument, whereas Lewis just blows up and then I blow up back. Um, but no, more a lot more with Lewis than with Jay. Okay, yeah, I could see that. He's, he, I mean, he talks about all the time about his anger being an issue of his, and and oh, that's his, that's a legit. To thing. his great credit, he's like, I hate it. There's two types of two types of scenarios. I hate it when. I'm not going to ask this question. Uh, I hate it when um, people are like, well, I have this major flaw. That's just how it's going to be. It's like, wait, wait, wait. Oh. I, I have flaws. You have flaws. When I identify major flaws in my whatever, I if I know if I, can, I try to fix them, if I can't fix them, I build off ramps to right. compensate right. for them. Like I have real bad, I, I, what I call tactile amnesia. Meaning if I'm not touching something that I have to leave the house with, 100% of the time, not exaggerating. I will forget it. Hmm. So that means I always leave it on the inside door handle. So I pick it up. And it's like so right. bad. Like it, sometimes once I left, I had uh, DVDs in one hand and garbage in the other. When I put them in the same hand to lock the door, I threw them both out. So it, I know I have this issue. I have to work around it. The other kind of thing, though, is when people have their flaws and they can't do anything about it. And they're consumed by them. Like Picar was like this and some other people. And you watch it and it's terrifying to see. Yeah. Yeah, no, it definitely is. There's, uh, but the the thing that's the most infuriating is when people just identify it. And it's like, well, that's me. You know, yeah, my Whereas friend, women is goes like, oh, I'm a total bitch, and you're like, all right, that's step one. That was identifying me. Identifying me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, remember when you said that? It's like, but now work on that. Now try to get a little better on it. Yeah, or own it. And my friends had a thing with her mom, and her mom was like, well, you know, this is one of my issues. I'm like, your issues. Why are you apostrophe? Your issue. <laughs> It's not her issue. Don't make it her issue. Don't right. visit your shit yes. and other people. It's not that hard. Yeah, no, I agree. Let me tell you guys about bluechew.com. And their promo code is malice. B L U E C U dot com malice. What's Blue Chew? Well, let me just say what they said. If you like sex, you'll like bluechew.com. It's a performance enhancement for the bedroom. I'm going to get some samples. I know Lewis has some, and I'm going to try them, and I'll report back. It's the first chewable with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Works faster than pills. You could take them in a full or empty stomach. It's cheaper. Takes a few minutes. You don't have a doctor visit. No awkward conversation. Don't wait in line to pharmacy. And it comes to your door, no pun intended, in discreet packaging. So it's not like it's going to say, boner pills. No. If you go to bluechew.com, promo code MALICE. You'll get confidence in bed every time. Their slogan is chew it and do it. I think anytime you're selling something like this, there's no way you can avoid the puns. Go a few extra rounds. Bluechew.com promo code malice. I can't wait to try this stuff. I'm with you. Uh, what is your favorite thing about still doing part of the problem after all this time? Um... You know, what's weird is that like part of the problem almost started as almost like therapy for me. Oh. Like I just wanted to vent about all this stuff. Like I was getting into politics and libertarianism and I was like, I got to rant about all this stuff because it's just like, the you know, there's all this craziness going on. I love, I really, really love that people are interested in my opinion okay. on things. There's something about that that is deeply satisfying to me. And um, I, I don't, you know, like I'm politics and like libertarianism and like ideas of, of this sort i'm just i fucking love them 
I mean, I'm like the guy who I'll, I'll talk till three in the morning about this stuff. Like I, I never tire of it. And there's always some other kind of, you know, like path to go down. So I just love, I love doing it. I love doing it. And I love that there's like, I love that the show has been built up and there's this big audience who's interested in it. And I, there was something to me about, um, I know me and you have talked about this before, but when you'll run into people or, you know, either personally or online or whatever, and they'll be like, oh, dude, you like you introduced me to this idea or you introduced me to that. And I just remember how much it meant to yeah, me yeah, when yeah. I was introduced to those yeah. and to be able to do that for someone else. And I'm not exactly sure why, but I really love that moment. I... Could not agree. I love how this is like the, the, that cartoon making fun of Dave Rubin. I agree. <laughs> I love that. I did not have a lot of support growing up. I had, if people have read Ego and Hubris, I had the quite the opposite. At every point, like my upbringing was designed to kind of tear me down and, and break me, uh, which worked out well in the long term. Um, so because it made me resilient and, and right. strong. It is so... Um, it, it's hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that there are people who are like, oh, they care about what I have to say, and they li- they're actually listening. Yeah, the North Korea stuff was a big one because then it's like I'm clearly coming at this from an informed place. So even if my analysis is full of shit, I'm bringing you information, which is unambiguous. But it's weird how so many people are putting their money where their mouth is, and they're like, like keep fighting a good fight, and it's just like you are incentivizing me to do exactly what cost me so much strife and headache my entire life. So it's a mind fuck in that regard. I'm much more, I think, in many ways abrasive than you. Um, And so it's very weird. And I'm not going to say it's extremely flattering, but it's also like, like this just happened last week. Um, There was this rare book I want because I'm doing this deep dive in the Harlem Renaissance now. Okay. And I'm like, eh, do I really want it? It's a hundred bucks. And someone's just like, I'm going to pay for half of it. I'm like, you don't need to, t- you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I'm still emo- like, you know, emotionally, you had your daughter. I don't know how to grapple with this emotionally. It's, it's something yeah. that I'm fucking with. Oh no. I mean, I got me. people who sent me stuff like, um, when I had the baby or send you like gifts. Oh wait, there's like a package that. here for you. Do we have a pack? There's a package oh, nice. here for you from my supporting listeners. There is a package here. Oh, God. It's something with a Mitt Romney shirt or something like that. I can already tell you. I know where this is going. I, they I, they mailed it. It should have been here. <laughs> I completely forgot. Well, it might take it's our care crack It's care of Michael Malice. It's not here? They sent it a while ago. I complete. Thank you for bring- anyway. You were saying people send you stuff. No, just just kind of agreeing with what you said. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, no, but it's it really is like it's it's incredible, and it's a weird feeling because it's not like you know the the with the technology and stuff where you can kind of start just you can just make it yourself. Like the fact that no one really gave you a show. You're just like I'm doing a show. I mean, I guess you say Lewis or Kumi sure. or whatever, but really, it's just kind of like you're doing a show. Is that it? No, it's in a package. It's not. It's not gonna be opened. It'll say to Michael Malice, care of uh, Guest Digital. All right. Well, we'll okay, see. Okay, it's not we here. I'll it. get it to you. I'll get it to you another time. All right. You get a picture with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. We uh, we got five more minutes. What are you at this point sick of talking about? Hmm. Um. I don't know. I don't know that there's there's anything that comes to mind. I mean, there'll be certain topics that I, I kind of feel like I've covered and then I go away from them, sure. but I'll usually come back to them at some point later. Um, I, I mean, I there, there's a lot of things that um, I, I guess I, I always like maybe like one of the weird things about me was like um, so I was going I was doing Kennedy. Uh, the other day and they changed one of the topics and we were going to talk about the green new deal yeah and then they wanted to talk about uh jeff bezos dick pic yeah and i was just like yeah i don't i just don't care care. about this i don't care about it at all which is weird i guess for a comedian but i was just like yeah i don't know fruit yeah it's exactly it's like i don't want to like that's chelsea handler shit i don't want to make the shit funny that anyone could make fun right you know what i mean like it's like you you want to like try to do something a little bit better so i get tired of the the stuff i'm tired of isn't really stuff that i was ever super into talking about but i do agree with tucker carlson said this and i I thought it was just perfect but where he was like if your thing is still like 
you know, Trump is dumb or just something about Trump. Being, it's like that's like the least interesting thing that's going on right now yeah. in the country. There's so much fascinating shit going on right now. The least interesting of it at this point is like Donald Trump flubbed up this line or something yeah. or he speaks like a third grader. It's like we know we got over this pretty quickly. It's like yeah, and Michael Jackson is weird and George Bush was dumb. Like I, I know. Yeah, we it's got obvious. It. I would just watch the documentary on Hubert Selby. Are you familiar with him? No. Okay, he's an author. He wrote Last Exit to Brooklyn, Requiem for a Dream. The I, I, I know the movie Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, uh, the book's very similar. He co-wrote the screenplay with Darren Aronofsky. And I watched the documentary. He passed not that long ago. And there's a certain segment of the documentary about him. And he's this, he's what's fascinating about Hubert Selby is he's a transgressive writer because he's the one who's writing about junkies and like gang rape and all these things mm-hmm. like 1960. And it was just like a huge thing. And he's treating these stories kind of matter of factly instead of like morality tales. And there's a segment of the documentary. So he had this long life and he, they take out his lung and it, all these books that are just so fuck with people's heads. And it's like how much he was against George W. Bush and how blah, 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 Iraq. And I'm like, you are one of the most unique writers of all time. And for this like 100 minute documentary, for there to be any time wasted on George fucking Bush yeah. is so beneath you and so not uh, unoriginal. So even if you're like, I hate George Bush for all the correct reasons, who cares? This is not unique to you. Yeah, no, I agree. And there's something, it, it's like, um, and maybe this is part of living in New York and just being in like a very left-wing environment, but it's also like, it's like the people who like being against George W. Bush or being against Trump. It's just it's kind of inherently boring. It's just I've just heard this so many times, and it's such a there, there's no risk associated with this position. It's not like it's not challenging anything. It's not you know what I mean. Like it's it's just again I agree with it, but it's just boring. Um, we have a new segment here. Okay. On uh, you're welcome. That I'm. This is you're the first person. To, uh, it's a brand new segment. Yeah, we're going to have a, some kind of little flashy, um, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, graphics? Graphics. Yeah, that's the word. Sorry, English is my second language. <laughs> what? And this is this question. What has been your favorite part of this interview? Hmm. My favorite part of this interview. Hmm. I did not enjoy it at all. Nothing. <laughs> you still have the favorite part. Even if you had a bad meal, there'd no, be a, at least that part. They were. It was all bad. Um, my favorite part of the interview. I don't know. Jesus, I was just gonna give like a cop out answer. Like I just always love talking to you. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think back. What was uh? Well, I liked I like having the uh, the abortion conversation with you because it does it challenges me on, on my view and it's a it's one of my newest formed uh, beliefs. So I like kind of like thinking it through with somebody else who comes at, at, at life in general from a similar perspective. So I'd say that. Well, Dave, you are welcome. <laughs> That's the cue. 